Welcome to the Tava Museum of Art and Huntopia. I'm Cindy Peterson, the Executive Director. And I'm Patrick Shaw Cable, Deputy Director of Exhibitions and Collections. So we are in the space of Huntopia, yes. um, and we want to just share some things about Hunt Slonum and how this exhibition um, was created, but also some of the pieces. And I'll hand it to you to start us off. Sure. This has been a really different and unique exhibition and very exciting exhibition in a lot of different ways, including installation. We started using a three-dimensional scale model by choosing colors, uh, the team with the artist, long distance, and a lot of the main layout was planned in advance, but a few things we tweaked when the artist came to town for installation, and this is one of them. Originally, this, photo, uh, this painting of, of a photograph of Abraham Lincoln by the artist Hunt Slonum, so a contemporary work, was going to hang in the Lincoln Room, which we'll see in a subsequent episode. But during the installation of the artist here, uh, he had thought that he would stack and group his top hats on a table or shelf. But we moved this picture into this room against this wonderful great purple wall. And we realized it really popped out. And then the artist decided, why not put all these top hats around and hang them on the wall? Yeah, so he was sitting actually across the room and saying, let's do this organically. And um, he had you know, thought about that and you know, wanted it then around the Lincoln painting. Let's tell some stories about, you know, when we were at all the adventures we actually had with Hunt Sloan, oh, yes. where his uh, studio is in, in Brooklyn, and he actually um, restores and saves different plantations and historic homes and has seven in Louisiana, Pennsylvania, and New York. Yeah, and this is really the first American exhibition, in fact, that follows that model he uses in his mansions and plantations. It's not just an exhibition of artwork by Hans Slonim, though there is a lot of that in the exhibition, but it also really foregrounds what he enjoys the most is using his artwork along with 100-year-old furniture, uh, reupholstered furniture, and antiquities and decorative arts uh, from all kinds of periods that he juxtaposes in this really eclectic fashion with his own work. And, and we were on a, at least four adventures yes. with you, me, Joanne, and Hunt, and um, all locally bought that he bought here, and he had upholstered here as well, and with his fabrics, which we'll see throughout the exhibition. But just even this table, um, you know, we were pushing around the cart in Dukes up in Lexington and Antiques by the Market, um, and actually gathering all types of uh, candlesticks. Uh, all colors and spaces, and talk about you know what we did then here with the with the candles. Yeah, it's really interesting. Uh, as Cindy said, we purchased these candles at local antique shops, all different colors, and it reminds me of a saying from Hunt. He says, "If you're having trouble with an item, group it in large numbers, and that usually helps." <laughs> and he really likes to do that. But then we've included uh, interesting Asian ceramics from our permanent collection that have never been on view. They were part of the Peggy Thomas McDowell gift, uh, the niece of Thomas Aikens, and then these happened to be in her home for, in her home, so she donated these as part of works uh, by Aikens. Uh, and we were talking earlier too how this is a really interesting exhibition in terms of that uh, method of juxtaposing historical, contemporary, and then really brightly colored walls. You might find in this exhibition. Uh, ideas or hints for wall accents in your home or ways to group objects in a very eclectic fashion. Yeah, that's great. And I'd love to keep moving into the vignettes. There's so many vignettes in the exhibition. We're going to show you a couple of, of key things. And it's a combination of our permanent collection yes. as well. And I'll show you one of my favorites. Uh, it's called the Curiosity Shop. Uh, and we actually went in the vault on one of the adventures with Hunt and um, really raided the vault and, and, and in terms of, of combining, combining with the permanent collection, his works, which were loaned from different community partners uh, that around, around the regional area and um, local collectors. This is the curiosity shop from our permanent collection. We have over 2,200 works in the, in the collection. And this is um, painter Johann Hamza, 1921, um, oil on wood, narrative painter, exquisite detail, and it really tells the story. And that's why I, I love this one, but love it in this space. And you can see the chandeliers, you can see um, lots of things in the, in the painting uh, in terms of items, antiques, and, 
and um, which you know kind of relates back to back to this space. Oh yes. So yeah, we'll move into the next into the next room. Okay. Although let's stop here because this was another you know um, hunt as Joanne Casulo would say really just has that. Um, that touch where he'll see one thing somewhere, another somewhere else, and it doesn't have to be perfect. And this was a two different pieces, and he said, this is gonna go together, and it'll go in between these spaces, and next to another piece of um, uh, furniture, and it looks great in the space, yes. but when we both saw it, in the, you know, all three of us were like, okay, uh, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe. Um, and you know, the mirror, too, that we have in this space has a crack, and that's all that, you know, what Hunt says too, it doesn't have to, there can be imperfections and that gives it character. Oh, yes. Oh. Well, let's walk into the next one. Okay. This is so much, you know, Hunt. Yes. As we look at Huntopia, that name, and really going into the world of, of Hunt Slonum. In fact, every piece of furniture in here, he reupholstered with his own fabric. He works with a special company. Uh, to translate his designs into fabric. So we have butterfly, some more subdued, some more bold, plant motifs. And then every artwork in this room also, unlike the last niche room that we saw, which had a lot of historical work. Again, as I said earlier, he likes to juxtapose historical and contemporary. All the paintings in this room are actually by the artist. We have really recent works. Uh, this uh, painting of a saint, Rosa of Lima, from an from a institutional collection, one of the institutional collections we borrowed from, that's an early work by the artist, but most of them were recent works by him. And then again, as I said, the fabrics in this room, they're all uh, Hunt-designed fabrics. And a lot, we worked with a lot of community partners. I mean, this has been just a, an exhibition yes. of a combination, not only from our permanent collection, and where we have Hunt Sloanum as well, but um, from Olin Hall Galleries at Roanoke College, from uh, the Eleanor D. Uh, Wilson Museum at Hollins, and the History Randall Museum. History Museum, Salem furniture. Museum, uh, so for some of the furniture, Randolph-Macon, and then and the list goes on of individuals that have had um, Hunt Sloan's work, but also furniture that they've let us borrow in chandeliers. Yes. Wow. Uh, and as we as we move into the main space again, uh, you know, this exhibition, Huntopia, was co-curated by Eva Thornton, our assistant curator, and Hunt Slonum, the artist. Uh, and we have for the you know our first catalog in over ten years, so we're really excited to you know share that. And there's a beautifully photographed, beautifully photographed, and really shows the exhibition up close and vibrant as it really is. And has a um, an interview with Hunt and Eva that you know, really goes into you know what Hunt Toby and who Hunt Slogan is and yeah yeah and he's a very interesting figure complex individual he uses repetition similar he, he in fact with a show like this he thought of Warhol um, an old exhibition raiding the refrigerator where Warhol was asked by a museum in the Northeast to use the permanent collection and then create his own show from it. Uh, Hunt was really inspired by that to start his practice of combining his work with historical work. And here again, he used a lot from our permanent collection. Uh, but again, the catalog, it talks also about he has this thing of spirituality, and we'll talk about that in a further segment too, in terms of how he channels Abraham Lincoln, for example. Right, and the Huntopia catalog, uh, to see it up close yes. and read the interview is available online, and we'll go ahead and We'll be able to ship it to you in um, seven days, so take a look at that. And if and you see, scarf, too. And the scarf, yeah. that's right. So next, in our next segment, too, we'll really talk about the bunnies. And we have a bunny wall and Designed by Hunt. Designed by Hunt, the scarves, but also um, the fabric. So these were locally purchased and locally upholstered. And I guess one more story, and before we close, Patrick, uh, if you remember when we went into Black Dog Salvage on oh, one right. of our adventures, yes. and we walked in and he turned to me and he saw this bank arch at Black Dog Salvage and he said, Cindy, I want that in the exhibition. And so, um, and here it is. And we worked closely with Black Dog Salvage, with Robert and Mike, and uh, the installation, the time lapse of actually having it um, be installed in the gallery. Um, we're gonna be posting that later today and you can see that live. But this is really, I mean, it made the exhibition from that one room to the next 
really exemplified how he, um, you know, you can just really imagine being in one of his plantations, and this was a finishing touch. And through a peak of the bank entrance, you see a peak of the red Lincoln-inspired seance room that we'll talk about in a second. So. Yeah, well, it's just been great to, yeah. Yeah, to show um, Hunttopia. It's a fun exhibition. It is a great ex exhibition. Uh, and you can see more online at tamamuseum.org. And we'll, we'll be in the next space um, in a subsequent um, tour. Thank you. Thank you.